Hi everyone in the world of cloud computing, IoT, AI and fintech. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. Here are a few news highlights from this week in the fast moving world of cloud computing. Thank you all for your support on social media about last week's news and please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. If you have any media submissions regarding cloud computing, please email us at media at nelsonhilliard.com. This week, the Bureau of Meteorology is preparing to adopt a cloud hybrid model for its IT infrastructure. The National Weather Agency currently has a limited reliance on cloud, with its ICT services largely delivered from two managed data centres in Melbourne and a number of small data centres associated with regional forecasting centres across Australia. The Bureau also operates a series of bases or over-serving operation hubs that support operations and maintenance of observing and monitoring systems. But it is now looking to place more emphasis on cloud given its intake and use of data will continue to increase as data sources increase. A tender document stated that historically the Bureau has made limited use of cloud services. The Bureau's strategic direction is to adopt a hybrid cloud model. The Bureau's IT landscape includes production and non-production instances of both Linux and Windows servers using a variety of versions and distribution of these operating systems. There are in excess of 700 discrete servers defined today. Most of the server instances are now virtualized hosts running within the data center infrastructure. This week, New Zealand government is to appoint a CTO. New Zealand's new federal government will appoint a chief technology officer to create and deliver a national digital roadmap spanning the next five to 10 years. Minister of Government Digital Services, Broadcasting, Communications and Digital Media Claire Curran said the role was needed for the government to meet its IT goals. The government said it wants to close the digital divide by 2020 and make ICT the second lar largest contributor to New Zealand's gross domestic product by 2025. Claire Curran said the CTO will develop a roadmap that will include fibre optic network capabilities and 5G, 6G and 7G mobile technologies along with artificial intelligence, robotics, autonomous vehicles, digital fabrication, augmented and virtual reality and the Internet of Things. Claire Curran went on to say in a statement that New Zealanders rightly expect that their government should behave in a predictable, open and transparent way and to ensure that nobody is left behind. The internet and digital tools are fundamental to us achieving these goals. New South Wales Clinical IT Chief departs eHealth. New South Wales first ever Chief Clinical Information Officer John Lambert has called it quits after more than three years overseeing the state's clinical IT direction. A spokesperson confirmed that Lambert will leave eHealth New South Wales on Thursday with a recruitment process for a new CCIO to commence shortly. Lambert posted on LinkedIn that he was pausing to enjoy life for a while. The spokesperson wouldn't elaborate on the reasons for his departure. Lambert took up the post in August 2014 as part of the state's 2013 blueprint for eHealth. He was tasked with bridging the divide between IT staff and clinicians and brought with him an extensive medical career at Sydney's Royal Prince Alfred Hospital and prior to that in coding software and designing electronic devices for a family owned health technology company. This week sees the National Bank of Australia or NAB to hire 600 IT workers. NAB is on a recruitment drive to hire 600 technology specialists as part of its rebalance of its IT workforce. The bank last week revealed a wide-ranging restructure of its business in a move towards automation, simplification and a flatter organisational structure in the pursuit of a $1 billion in cost savings by year ending 2020. It said 4,000 workers would be let go and 2,000 new roles would be created. The bank also revealed plans to insource critical roles within its IT workforce and accelerate capability in key areas of digital technology, data and AI. Today, NAB said it was looking to immediately hire 600 specialists in the areas of software engineering, data, architecture and security. 
the recruitment drive is intended to bring more of the skills it currently relies on outsourcers for in-house to increase competitive advantage. Chief Technology and Operations Officer Patrick Wright said in a statement, we want the top talent in the industry to come and join us as we change dramatically to become the very best bank we can and give our customers the products and services they demand and deserve. We know this is an ambitious target and acknowledge that the war for talent is intense, but these are the essential skills and roles we need in order to deliver our plan. This significant investment will help change the way we provision technology services, which is critical to delivering more effectively to balance innovation with resilience and speed with security. NAB said much of the planned 4.5 billion investment into the bank over the next three years would go towards technology and digital initiatives. NAB has already appointed two individuals to newly created technology executive roles. Yuri Misnik has joined the bank as its executive general manager of business, enabling technology from HSBC in London. And Carl McManara is the new executive general manager, leading NAB's program management office. McNamara had worked for 18 years at Scotia Bank in Canada to take on the new role. This week, the former Yahoo chief blames Russia for the mega hack. Former Yahoo chief executive Marissa Mayer has apologized for the internet company's massive data breaches and blamed Russian agents. Mayer made the statements at a US Senate hearing on the growing number of cyber attacks involving major United States companies. She said, as CEO, these thefts occurred during my tenure and I want to sincerely apologize to each and every one of our users. Unfortunately, while all our measures helped Yahoo successfully defend against the barrage of attacks by both private and state-sponsored hackers, Russian agents intruded on our systems and stole our users' data. Verizon, the largest US wireless telco, acquired most of Yahoo's assets in June, the same month that Mayer stepped down. In March, federal prosecutors charged two Russian intelligence agents and two hackers with masterminding a 2014 theft of 500 million Yahoo accounts, the first time the US government has criminally charged Russian spies for cyber crimes. Those charges came amid a controversy relating to the alleged Kremlin-backed hacking of the 2016 US presidential election and possible links between Russian figures and associates of President Donald Trump. Russia has denied trying to influence the US election in any way. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. I hope you enjoyed watching this week's cloud computing, IoT, fintech and AI news highlights. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.